Hi, this is Chris Heineken bringing you a new installment of our Insight Track. And the goal of the interviews is to bring market trending from thought leaders in industry and technology around analytics, machine learning, and how companies are investing in data-driven approaches and systems of intelligence. And joining me today is Steve Brown, who is the Senior Director of Tableau CRM and leads the solution engineering team over at Salesforce and Tableau. And before we get going, I wanna say thank you to Steve. Steve, you've been awesome to work with over the last couple of years. You've given us great access and uh, it's been tremendous learning from you in the marketplace. So thanks for joining us and welcome. Great, thanks for having me. Uh, look forward to this session and you've been a great partner over the years and looking forward to continuing the momentum moving forward. Great. Well, uh, to get us going, Steve, maybe you can walk us through a little bit of your journey at Salesforce. How has that evolved to put you in the spot that you're in? Yeah, sounds good. Uh, well, thanks again for, for having me and uh, for being interested in what I have to say and sharing my journey and thoughts. My journey uh, to Salesforce is, uh, is interesting, as is my journey here at Salesforce. So, Prior to joining Salesforce, I was a startup guy. Uh, so trying to invent the future with a number of startups, I consider myself about three for five in the startup game and some quite interesting stories from that period of my career. Um, but one thing I realized is that in order, to, in order to truly change the world, you need some mass behind you. Uh, and so when the opportunity arose to to join Salesforce and join this very exciting, almost startup within a larger company of Salesforce, uh, it was right up my alley. And so I jumped at the opportunity and came in as a solution engineer myself in what was then known as Wave Analytics, uh, right at its launch. And that was just such an exciting time to join this group. We were a small, scrappy group within the broader Salesforce, but with a mission to really bring analytics to Salesforce customers. And over the course of the past five years that I've been here at Salesforce, we've really accomplished that um, mission for a number of our customers. Uh, so I spent the first year as an individual contributor, a solution engineer myself, and then stepped into leadership uh, about four years ago. And then just this year, uh, as my boss, Penelope Thompson, moved on to a VP role in core Salesforce, had the opportunity to lead the entire organization. What I've also led during my time here at Salesforce is a group that we call the Einstein Black Belts. And these are cross-cloud Einstein AI uh, experts that can talk the full spectrum of AI here at Salesforce, from package solutions to custom to programmatic, uh, where formerly Einstein Analytics, now Tableau CRM is the middle part of that spectrum. So it's been a great journey. Um, we've helped so many customers with their digital and data transformations with Salesforce, and the future is bright for us. Thanks for walking through that, by the way. Three out of five, those are pretty good odds. Those are good success odds there. It was, and, it was pretty good with some very interesting <laughs> stories along the way. That yeah, well, be part two. you have some really interesting perspective because you see a ton of demand in the market, right? You see all the deal flow that's going on there. So you have a unique perspective on the patterns and uh, how they've emerged in these buying cycles over the last few years. Um, how would you describe the evolution of the landscape around analytics and AI as you've observed it over the last couple of years? Yeah, great question. Um, so in the early days of uh, bringing AI specifically to market with Salesforce, we fought what we used to call phase two itis, right? So this was with Salesforce customers that were buying into analytics but they were pushing off the AI conversation to phase two uh, and thinking that, okay, that sounds exciting, but we'll get to that uh, later. And what we've seen over the past few years is a shift to bringing that into initial implementations of Salesforce. 
because it just makes sense for uh, creating an intelligent experience for the end users in the workflow of Salesforce. And it helps with a lot of things. And first among them is adoption of Salesforce. So many times take a sales rep, for instance, uh, Salesforce is great for them, but they put a lot into the system, right? And it gives them some, some great uh, information back, but with layering in AI, now they actually get predictive intelligence built within their workflow that can help them sell more. <laughs> For the service agent, it can help them do their job better with higher customer satisfaction and addressing more cases, uh, use cases and uh, cases with customers. So that bringing it forward has been a bit of a tectonic shift in our customers instead of thinking about it in phase two. Another trend that we've seen is initially bringing this to market, this capability of a, of a business scientist, uh, right? So somebody who doesn't know AI, R, or Python uh, type skills is still able to do data science. That was considered a bit of a threat to the data science community and data scientists within our target customers. And so we would often find ourselves in rooms with data scientists in a bit more of a defensive mode instead of an expansive mode. And that, let's say, is shifting uh, mm -hmm. as we move forward, where data scientists really realize there's great tools out there for use cases that are not the best use of their time. And, uh, you know, no self-respecting data scientist wants to be doing regression all day, right? But there are a, so many business problems that can be solved with regression. And right. so addressing those kinds of challenges are, are very interesting. And the message to our customers is think of this as not the back office lab experiment uh, with artificial intelligence, but rather operationalizing AI throughout your entire organization and addressing more use cases. So that's been uh, a bit of a shift that we've seen in the market over the last few years. Perfect. Well, so that kind of leads to my next question, which I'm always fascinated by what are the two, one or two things that separate tremendous success from just kind of average outcomes when you're investing in CRM systems and AI and analytics. Um, as you think about success patterns and um, kind of what makes companies successful in this space, any, any advice that you give to companies that are evaluating an investment that uh, you'd want to put on the, on the right path to get started? Yeah, I think um, first and foremost, dovetailing on the, my last comments, it's making sure that you get analytics into the hands of analytics and AI in the, in the hands of the frontline users, those that are in Salesforce every day in the workflow. And not thinking about analytics and AI as a big, um, big undertaking for just a few within the organization where you're seeking that needle moving aha moment that's going to you know, transform your go-to-market strategy. There are components of that uh, with AI that, that can assist, but specifically at Tableau CRM and analytics and AI here at Salesforce, it's about operationalizing those insights and those hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of little nudges along the way each and every day when a human is interacting with another human or automating a process within Salesforce to make that interaction of a salesperson with their customer just that much smarter, a service person with their customer just that much smarter with targeted recommendations and with rolling out AI specifically with Salesforce, it's so important to not just give the what, which is the prediction, maybe a predicted close date, a predicted customer satisfaction score, but also giving the why to build the trust in the model and the what to do about it, the action to be taken right there in the workflow. And when you combine that, a one-to-one -one model um, of, of getting analytics and AI into the hands of all users, with this what, why, what to do about it pattern at the individual contributor level, it's very powerful. Um, we're seeing this done really well, for instance, in our global system integrator customers, right? Which uh, 
have a lot of insight into how this technology is being brought to market. And we're seeing just tremendous adoption across tens of thousands of uh, users um, in a very powerful way. Uh, and it just is transforming a number of uh, verticals that we're touching. Great advice and thank you there, Steve, for that. Um, when we got going together a couple of years ago, uh, the discussion always seemed to gravitate towards use cases and there was no shortage of ideas and use cases on where to apply technology like machine learning. Um, as you think about it now, any kind of primary use cases that are jumping out to you that, um, you know, kind of call them high traffic use cases, maybe they're horizontal across different verticals, or maybe they're, you know, industry specific, anything that you're seeing over the course of the last, you know, few months that jumps out to you? Yeah, sure. With AI embedded it within Salesforce, uh, it's all about a needle moving KPI, right? So that's where the use cases always begin. And that's where our conversations with customers begin. What are a uh, few to a handful of KPIs that are very meaningful to your business that a few percentage point change in that outcome, uh, positive change in that outcome will be truly meaningful uh, for your business. And so we seek those impactful KPIs, right? So close rates of deals, you know, and we're Salesforce, right? So it's generally around sales and service um, and uh, customer satisfaction uh, within a service center or reducing churn, keeping an eye on potential attrition of customers, especially in this era of the pandemic. Um, so those are very common use cases uh, we see. And then specific to industries, there's, there's very compelling uh, use cases. So um, thinking about financial services with wealth management, for instance, the likelihood for assets under management to grow, right? So for a particular person to bring uh, more assets into the bank, very powerful use case that's powering that human to human interaction, right? It's letting a wealth manager prioritize her day in a more effective manner. So these kinds of prioritization use cases with KPIs tied to them uh, are a very compelling uh, pattern. And we're seeing a lot of um, interest too in public sector, right? So this is a, a space which is uh, undergoing a, a radical shift in general, but specifically in, in these days, um, they are stepping in. And so with applications and use cases like around contract tracing, analytics and AI just needs to be woven without, within that uh, business process at the municipality level. Um, so that's exciting to see this kind of momentum in, uh, in that vertical as well. Perfect. Thanks, Steve. A um, couple more questions for you. We are coming off the heels of Tableau Conference. Some big announcements around Einstein and Tableau and now Tableau CRM. And uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about your thoughts on um, the path going forward with uh, both products and, and how you see that evolving into next year. Yeah, I'm super excited how all this is coming together. Um, so at Tableau Conference-ish, uh, the new name for Einstein Analytics was announced as Tableau CRM, which I think is just a fantastic name uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, you know, elevates Einstein Analytics to a peer of all other Tableau products as Tableau CRM. So it reinforces that investment in this technology stack um, for our customers for a long time to come. So uh, that's exciting. It does that while also cleanly um, separating out the analytics brand from the AI brand within Salesforce. So Tableau, clearly the analytics brand for Salesforce customers and Einstein, the AI brand for everything else. And it's uh, established as a foundational layer across all of Tableau. Tableau CRM natively integrating AI within the product stack. And you'll see that same weaving of AI throughout the user experience embedded within Tableau as well. And so as these 
technologies come together, uh, it's very promising and, and very exciting for us. Also, it gives our customers with Tableau CRM a, just a single front door to come in, right? So when thinking analytics, AI, and Salesforce, it's Tableau, right? So um, that is a nice simplification for our customers, I think, in a, uh, in a very compelling way. So, yeah, very exciting how we're bringing these, these technologies together, too. And it really starts with three different pillars. Uh, first, on that um, intelligence layer that we are just talking about. So, uh, Tableau CRM uh, has an AI embedded, and you'll see those predictions coming to Tableau, both in the user experience uh, layer, um, but also within the data prep uh, layer as well. Then on the data store side, so you'll see us being able to read and write uh, to the different data stores that are available within Tableau CRM and, uh, and Tableau's uh, Hyper. And then on the, Intel, uh, the uh, user experience, you'll see the authoring environments, the user experience uh, coming together as well. Uh, and so, letting our organizations build a common set of uh, skills that can be used across both product stacks. And that's just the beginning. Uh, so we are very, very excited about the possibilities of bringing the best of both worlds together for our customers. Uh, it's an outstanding recap there. And I love your front door analogy. Um, yes. makes a lot of sense. Last question for you, Steve. So related to uh, Tableau CRM, uh, customers that are kind of in the market, they're thinking about, well, I got both of these architectures in place and I'm going to be doing more investment next year. I'm maybe even considering starting investment. Any advice you'd give companies that are taking a look at your platform um, as they start thinking about 2021 on how they should be thinking about these investments, these platforms coming together? Yeah, absolutely. We've talked a lot about use cases, and that is fundamental to the discussion on analytics and AI, and that's where to begin the discussion. Uh, we talked about key, thinking about key KPIs and what are those needle movers. So before even thinking about products or stacks, that's the place to start around use cases that will truly be impactful for the company. And to do that at the, at the highest level, um, and think about a future state uh, that could be truly transformational for the companies. And so with that, those kinds of, uh, that kind of framework in mind, then it, uh, it's looking at um, the, the product stacks and the kind of how to get it done. And for that, it's really simple. And for, in the case of Salesforce uh, analytics and Tableau specifically, the workflow is within Salesforce, then it's Tableau CRM. And if the workflow is primarily outside of Salesforce, it's the rest of the Tableau uh, product stack. There's this you know, overlap uh, in the middle where you know, we work with organizations to decide what's the best approach. But it's almost always the case that uh, use the best of both worlds, use both products together for what their purpose built uh, for and Tableau CRM for native analytics and AI within the Salesforce workflow and Tableau for everything else. And when you leverage the best of both product stacks against use cases that span the organization in this transformational one-to-one -one analytics plus AI for every user and, uh, and meaningful use cases against KPIs, that is a rock solid strategy to begin with. Um, and will help organizations accelerate through and out of this pandemic situation and position them well for years to come. Perfect. Uh, well, thank you, Steve. I, I love the, the vision that you and the team are chasing down around analytics and Tableau and the convergence of these architectures and uh, just tremendously well done. So thank you for joining us today and uh, we'll look forward to, to being in touch again soon. Take care. Fantastic. Thank you for your partnership and thanks for the opportunity here today. Talk to you, you soon. Bet.